All right, we might get started. Good afternoon. My name is Trent Bellow, and I'm the head of small business New South Wales Metro at NAB. And on behalf of NAB, I want to welcome you to another one of our webinars aimed at helping businesses to succeed online. We've got small businesses dialing in from all across the country, representing a diverse group of industries and business sizes. As the largest business bank in the country, we wanted to play a small role in helping businesses get the most out of their digital capability. And we really hope you enjoy and get value from this webinar. The webinar will go for approximately 60 minutes, but if you've got questions along the way, please don't hesitate to drop a question in the Q&A box at the bottom of the webinar window and ask your question. And we'll do our best to answer all these questions along the way or at the end. In a moment, I'm going to hand over to our guest presenters, Nicole Wagonek and Emma Kendrick from Reach Local, who will guide you through practical tips on how to get your website found online. We will also email you a copy of the presentation, as well as a link to a replay of the webinar for you to re-watch or share with your business community. But before we begin, I just want to share our contact details and encourage you to connect with us to discuss any business needs that you might have. If you call this number, you can speak directly to one of our small business bankers. You can set up an appointment over the phone on a video just like this or face-to-face -face at a convenient time and location to you. We've also got a dedicated small business hub on our website. Get the small business community that you'll find tools, guides, and property information to help you through any stage of your business. And we have some special offers for website building tools that may be of interest. Now, without further ado, I'd love to introduce you to Nicole and Emma. Nicole has 16 years experience in digital marketing across the US and APAC. Nicole is an expert at developing online strategies and creating strategic relationships that help small to medium businesses take their business to the next level. Nicole loves helping business owners navigate ever-changing digital landscape of today. She is currently the Victorian Sales Director at Reach Local, where she leads a team of 10 digital marketing consultants. Emma has worked in marketing for the past 11 years with a focus on digital media. She has worked with leading global brands through to micro businesses and everything in between. Emma is an expert at digital marketing strategies, execution, analytics, and works with business owners daily to deliver results that make an impact on their business. Emma is currently the Digital Development Manager at Reach Local, where she coaches, trains, and develops the team to be world-class digital consultants. Over to you. Thank you, Trent, for that lovely introduction. Um, hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Emma and I have been working with businesses for the better part of the last decade, and we're really excited to take you through the basics of web presence and help you gain more businesses online, or sorry, yeah, gain more business online. Today, Emma and I are going to be imparting our knowledge um, on the basics of, of web presence and how you can benefit from improving where you can be found online. Um, we'll also discuss some real life examples of clients and their strategies on how they're driving more business engagement um, through different online tactics. Um, the, the key points that we're going to cover today is where you need to be found online as a business owner, how you can evaluate your website and make changes that drive real, real results, how to be found online in the most important listing sites, and how you can optimize those listings to get the most out of them. So. Starting off, you own a business, where do you need to start? First stop is your website. You know, your website is your online storefront. Websites have really been a cornerstone of any, you know, marketing strategy over the last 15 plus years, but having a friendly and informative website in a post-COVID environment is absolutely imperative. Um, we'll take a look at what makes a good website later on in today's session. Uh, another thing to consider is your Google My Business or GMB uh, as it's referred to or things like Bing Maps. These are free listing options that appear on Google as well as Bing um, or any search engine when someone is looking for your products and services. Um, the trend of buy local um, has really taken off in the last 12 months, uh, mainly due to the, the COVID environment. Um, and, and people are looking to buy local. It's, it's not only just a, you know, it's not only an economic um, benefit, but it's really convenient when you're able to engage with your local community and buy from local businesses. Um, Google My Business also provides a point of validation 
we'll also discuss reviews later on in today's session, um, and it really is something that you should be looking at as a business owner. Social media is another big one, you know, Facebook being the big one um, in our field. Most people have a Facebook page. Um, 18 million people actually in Australia currently have a Facebook page. And, and they're spending an average of 1.7 hours a day on Facebook. It's uh, a lot of time. <laughs> and, you know, having a Facebook business page is, again, it's a huge opportunity to be able to highlight your brand, your business, your services, and your products um, all for free. Listing sites. So local listing sites like yellow pages and white pages, you know, long are the days that we, we have this huge phone book that appears on, the, on our doorstep. Um, you know, all of this has moved online now. Um, and there's some free opportunities for you to list your business which just gives you more real estate online. Um, all in all, the more places that you can be found online, the, the better chance you have with engaging with customers. Uh, LinkedIn is another example. Um, every business owner should have a professional uh, LinkedIn profile as well as a LinkedIn page for their business. Again, both are free. Um, and if anyone is reviewing your business or deciding whether or not they wanna do business with you, um, this is just another listing that's going to appear on the first on the first page of the search engine results page. YouTube um, is, a, is one that we get asked about all the time. Um, and YouTube is now the biggest search engine in the world. It has surpassed Google. Um, YouTube allows us to really bring business to life. You know, if you, need, if you don't have a YouTube channel now, it's really something that you should start to consider. Think about how you can demonstrate your products or services um, or even demonstrate your, your staff, right? How you can showcase your brand in, in a realistic way. Now, at a minimum, you just need to make sure that you are setting up all of these listings. Um, really, you know, the, the fine art of this is making sure that your name, address, and phone number are all very consistent. Um, you know, when we go to the search engines, we're, what we're looking for is information. And as long as that information is, is up to date and accurate, we're happy people. Um, and so when we're happy, then the search engines are happy. So if all of your information across all of these listing sites are is, is accurate, um, it's going to look favorably upon you and it's going to give you a bit of a bump in terms of how you appear online. I want to have a bit of a, a chat with Emma. Um, again, she works with business owners every single day and has a lot of experience um, in, in different types of fields. So Emma, in your experience, what are the biggest challenges that SMEs face when trying to be found online? Yeah, thanks, Nicole. So look, in my experience, not having access to digital assets is a huge challenge, either because they're not uh, the owner or admin or because the listing hasn't been created or claimed. So this presents a number of problems for the business owner. Sometimes gaining control of assets can be really difficult because you've got disgruntled ex-employees, old agency contacts have, might have left, or even competitors sabotaging the process. I've actually seen it all before. So including a competitor redirecting calls to their business from another business, business's listing and web developers taking websites down and holding domains for ransom. So you can see how important this is. Unfortunately, due to the number of businesses that people or players like Google and Facebook deal with on a daily basis, it's impossible for them to look into every scenario, which makes it difficult and time consuming for you to try and regain control. And if you bought your website from a developer based in Narnia, you're going to have a tough time getting that one back too. An easy solution is to have all assets claimed under the business owner's email address and set up any info or admin at as managers so that you have multiple points of access to be able to do things like password resets to regain control. Always get your agency to add you as an owner to every digital asset. Yeah, those are some really great examples and I'm sure those that are listening in today have experienced one or two of those. Um, can you give me an example of a business who has achieved really great results just by showing up online? Of course. So this is an example of a localist, uh, a local removalist company. They've been in business for less than six months. They've claimed all of their digital assets. So you can see um, that they've got their Google My Business on the right hand side of the page. Down the bottom, they've got their Facebook business profile. Um, their website is ranking in the first position and, it, and it's got um, a little bit about them there. Um, 
But I think the important thing here is that they've just slowly sort of started chipping away with a few images, getting their information right and getting some reviews. So they've also got some Facebook reviews and eight Google reviews there as well. So that's really great. Increasing trust is super important for new businesses trying to generate their first clients. New businesses also sometimes have teething problems and there's a higher risk of negative experience being voiced online. So having those positive reviews is going to help balance that out if that scenario sort of arises. In the last um, 30 days, this business has had almost 500 views to their Google My Business. You can see that none of these have come from their brand and very minimal from direct. They are new. Um, they're a new business, so sorry, they're a new business, so this isn't surprising that people don't know who they are, but the important thing to note is the number of views that have come from discovery. People searching for the category or product, for example, removalist, piano, uh, piano removal, home removal, um, in 30 days, these resulted in one get direction, 23 site visits, eight click to calls, and all of this was for free. That's amazing. Um, and it's from a free listing just by showing up. Um, now, can you give me an example of a classic mistake that uh, businesses make when they're managing all of the digital assets? Yeah, so ag again, you know, definitely keeping their listings up to date and consistent. So you only need to dedicate a small amount of time to keeping these listings up to date, but it's commonly missed and causes frustration for your customers. I often see listings um, where the address might have been updated for, for a warehouse move or a shop front move, but the map pin isn't in the correct location, meaning customers are getting the wrong directions. I also see uh, business owners that do like a post on Facebook and they've invested time into actually doing that, which is awesome. But then they don't spend the extra few minutes to cut and paste it across all of the listings, which actually reduces the impact that that post and that time investment has for that business owner. So it's just important to make sure that your message is reinforced, that you don't miss out on communicating that message to people when they find you in other places other than Facebook. Definitely. So just it's the, the common thread through all of this is just being found everywhere you possibly can at all times and, and making sure that that information is consistent across all of the places you can be found online. Um, now I want to take a look at, a, at the websites. Again, we, we spoke about this earlier about how, it's, how important having your website is. It's your online storefront. It's the first thing that people are going to engage with when they're looking for you online. Um, now, Microsoft and Google are putting a lot of effort into ensuring that user experience is the key driving factor for how your website will appear in the search engines. Again, we go to, to Google and Microsoft um, when we're doing searches because we're looking for up-to-date, accurate information, and we want that experience to be very fluid. Um, so they're, they're putting sort of um, the focus on user experience over the next couple of months, which I'll talk about here shortly. Now, when people get to your website, um, the most important thing to think about is how can they engage with you? So uh, one of the classic mistakes that we tend to see is that um, people don't have their phone number listed on every page of the website or they don't have forms that are easy to engage with. Um, so just making sure that your phone number and you know, a contact us form is available on every page of the website. Um, and it's located up on the top banner there so that um, it's easy to navigate and easy to see. Um, the other thing to, to note is to put your location for where your business is located. Again, looking at that local first approach, um, people want to know that you're a locally based business um, and Google looks favorably on that. Uh, having an easy navigation, again, having your, your various products and services with different pages so that it's easy to navigate and it's very clear about what the information will be on the page that you're looking for. Um, you know, mobile friendly is, is the big one, it's the obvious one, everyone has a mobile device and, uh, you know, a lot of the searches that we're seeing being done on mobile, um, you know, today and it's, we've got to be able to easily engage with that. So click to call, make sure that we can scroll, make sure that, you know, the form fill all works on a mobile device. Um, and lastly, making sure that all of the links uh, to your other digital assets are prevalent on your website. So access to things like Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube, Google My Business, all of that, um, you know, because if you think about your, your, your web presence as a spider web, um, it all interconnects. And so, again, going back to the more places you can be found online, uh, the more chances you have to convert customers.
Now, taking a look um, at a more detailed um, update that's coming through. So as of mid-June, Google is really making a change to the way that your website will rank um, based on the user experience that you're providing for your customers. Uh, mobile friendly is the big one. Um, everyone should be able to use your, your uh, website on a mobile device, just like they would on a desktop. Um, the, the second part of this is looking at load, uh, loading speed. So the, 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 quick, uh, the quickness or the time that it takes for your website to load. We're impatient people these days, and so we wanna have a really seamless user experience. Um, we'll send around some tools um, after the webinar that you can use to actually test how fast your website loads. Um, the other element of this is interactivity. So the, this is the time from when a user first interacts with your website um, to when the browser sort of acknowledges that interaction. Um, it's a, quite a technical component of this and your web developer will no doubt be able to help you out there. Um, and visual stability really talks about pop-ups. Um, you know, I think we're over pop-ups now and so, just making sure that there's no surprises, no floating banners, no pop-ups um, on your website is gonna go a long way in ensuring that your website will, will stay on the first page of Google. Now, what can you do about all of this? Um, I think the first step is to become aware of it. So, you know, there's some tools we'll send around to, to test your web speed and things like that. Um, outside of that, it's really important that you engage with your web developer. They will be absolutely across all of these changes and will you know, be able to support you to ensure that you have a, um, you know, an ongoing smooth user experience. All right, so that's the feel on the website. Now, Emma, um, besides all of the things that I've just talked about, um, what else should a business owner be considering when they're designing their website? Yeah, so we've got um, all the standard, you know, colors, branding, quality images, font, you know, I think websites have been around long enough that, that we all sort of know the basics of what sort of makes up a, a decent looking website, but really starting to think about, you know, what do your customers expect? Does the site reflect your product or service offering? Is it, you know, is it a cheap product versus premium? If the site looks too fancy, will people be put off and think that you're too expensive? Or does your site give off a, off a cheap and cheerful vibe, but you're actually offering a premium service? So first impressions are going to be really important and perceptions will be made quickly. Really, though, in 2021, um, we do want to focus on user experience and, in, and conversions, which includes talking to your customers in a way that will increase the likelihood that they will engage with your business and website and hopefully leave their details. Definitely. You know, we're, um, we judge people very quickly. We judge websites very quickly. Um, and, you know, the first thing, your first impression when people come to your website yeah. So, and the next thing I really want to talk about is um, sort of making sure that you understand your customer's journey when looking for ways to entice your customer to give you their details. Um, is it a quick decision or a long buying journey, a long decision where they're going to do a period of research? This is relevant when thinking about the types of form fills that you're going to set up. Contact us, may as well say, give us your details and join our mailing list for discount screens. We are going to bombard you with emails to launch you through a conversion funnel of sales messages and discounts. The language used in the type of form can help move the customer through the process by resonating with their needs. An example here, a, a varicose vein surgeon offering an ebook on what to expect before your varicose vein surgery is going to help them with their research and be a valuable trade for their details. During the COVID lockdowns, I had a podiatrist which had a form on their website that said, request a free 15-minute phone consultation with a podiatrist. It was used a lot. Um, this sort of removed any cost and physical barriers and gave the clinic the contact details for those potential customers. Uh, the podiatrist then worked to either convert those people into online consultations or in clinic after they could reopen. So it was a great example. Moving away from medical sort of to compare, um, just say you've just backed into someone and you don't want to drive um, to multiple pair repairers for quotes, firstly, because you don't have time for that. And secondly, your car's broken. A repairer with the form upload your image for an instant quote is going to attract higher conversions as it reduces the barriers again for the customer and has a perception of being really fast. 
in this example, we had we had a client that had this and reception did call them back ASAP with a rough quote, obviously difficult from an image, um, but then they hadn't offered to pick up the vehicle on a tow truck for further inspection and this worked absolutely perfectly. Those are all excellent examples of how, you know, businesses have had to, to pivot a bit with the COVID environment, but also just the changing ways that we engage online. There's, you know, different generations don't want to talk on the phone. They want to be able to engage via a form fill, maybe a chat box, um, maybe a live, you know, scenario like you just explained. So those are all really great examples. Um, now, looking at Google My Business, Facebook, um, Bing Maps, they're all, you know, the main listing sites that everyone needs to be across. But there's many more, there are many more that you can tap into, which are going to help develop a wider net for your web presence. And, and it really just depends on the industry. Um, but the important thing to note here is when they, you set up your listings, it's best to use one email address across all inquiries. Um, and this is going to ensure that your inbound leads are all housed in one place and you can easily update and track your listings. Um, so again, you know, anytime you change location, if you've changed your phone number, um, if you've got new offers to promote, um, specials, different um, staffing hours, you know, special holidays, um, hours for different um, you know, times of the year, um, these are you know, things that need to be updated across all of your listing sites. And so if you've got it all housed in one place, it's going to make your life a lot easier. Um, the other thing to note here is that many of these reviews, uh, many of these listing sites have reviews, um, the review capability that's part of it. Um, and really what we're looking for here is a four star review uh, and above. People that have a star rating or four are considered to be trusted. Um, having poor online reviews is going to cost you customers online. Um, and my recommendation to all of our customers when they ask us about this is that you know, if you if you receive a, a negative review or one that's not quite up to the four star mark, um, the best thing that you can do is to professionally respond to that review in the best way possible to try and rectify it. A lot of the times, people are pretty reasonable and will you know alter their review or take it down. Um, and if not, that's okay too. The people that are looking at the reviews are going to see that you are professional business. You've responded in a polite way, and you're trying to rectify the situation. Um, and the other way that you can combat this um, when you create more of an engagement online is to, to try and solicit as many positive, happy customers as possible to leave you a good review online, either on Google My Business or on Facebook. Now, Emma, um, what do you think is more important? Um, kind of a fun question, Google My Business or the Facebook business page? Yeah, so there are millions of searches in Australia every day, and at least a third of them have a local intent. Generally speaking, Google My Business is most important for localised businesses and particularly service-based industries. If customers visit your location, so a showroom, store, clinic, restaurant, um, and need to find directions or are likely to want your service close by, so car servicing near me, closest petrol station, best high-in suburb, then Google My Business is critical. The photos uh, up here on the top right that I've posted of my naan bread um, is actually from a tiny shop in Airport West. That, that picture of that naan bread has had over 800 views since February this year. It's a brand new restaurant and 800 views um, in a suburb with a population of only seven and a half thousand is actually pretty good. Um, and it's a great example because before trying a new place, consumers are given confidence as to what they'll be getting in an order via the use of, uh, by the use of photos. This is particularly important for, for food and, and different types of um, verticals, um, but it's clearly been um, popular of, as part of that sort of research journey for people. Um, and by the way, their naan bread is actually the best I've ever had. The podiatry clinic, uh, in the in the left hand image here um, is generating almost 10,000 views per month on their Google My Business. So this is going to be a mix. This business has been around for a while. It includes current clients who are just getting directions to their appointment, um, people looking for the phone number on mobile from a branded from a branded search. Um, however, they are still generating a presence for at least 700 views a month for people looking for the category. Um, so at the bottom. Uh, on the bottom right hand image you can see um, the, the list of some of the categories here and then the views that it's generating 
um, you know, for keywords like podiatrist and, and podiatrist in the local area. Um, so again, that's still free, um, free impressions getting in front of people that don't know who they are um, and doesn't cost them any money. Um, Obviously, from you know a few things that I've said here, I have been very pro Google My Business, um, and, and I do love it for for a lot of our service based and localized industries. But if you're in e commerce, Facebook, I would argue, is going to be more important. Having that social proof, regular content for your products um, via Facebook posts, influencers, content, images is going to be hugely important because customers can't go to a store and look at and feel your product. Um, they're not going to need directions. Um, they may not even be able to call you if you're fully e-com and you're open 24-7. So they aren't going to be looking for your opening hours. Um, that info isn't going to be sought after. Um, People also are more likely to visit places like Facebook and YouTube in the scenario to find video content that the Google front page doesn't generally offer up front for the type of searches that they would be looking for. So again, it really comes back to who are your customers, what are their online behaviours and, and what kind of information are they going to be looking for? Um, and then I would argue sort of to round that off that Facebook is probably less important for location based businesses, but, you know, definitely still part of the picture. So um, not worth sort of discounting altogether. So long story short, they're both important and you should be on both. Um, however, depending on the type of industry that you're in, um, one could be of more value to you. So if you were going to pri prioritize a review location, where would you be sending your customers? Yeah, and again, this one is going to it's going to be a bit of a balance, but all reviews help improve trust and credibility. Um, so with so many to choose from, it's just important to understand which ones are going to bring the biggest reward for your business, because as we've discussed, you know, it's hard to get positive reviews sometimes. Um, there's third party dedicated review sites such as Trust pilot that can hold a lot of weight with customers, particularly for e-commerce. They have integrations for these reviews to update live onto the website and include um, software to help you receive more reviews easily. But those type of third party um, review sites can come at a cost. Um, Google reviews contribute the most towards improving local organic search rankings, which gets your business in front of people who are searching for your service and ultimately bringing you new customers. Um, Facebook reviews do build into the Google organic algorithm though, so it's important you don't completely neglect the platform. Um, more and more we're seeing people using Facebook to find local businesses and check out their social proof. Also, as we've spoken about, e-commerce is a different beast and I would argue that um, Facebook and third-party reviews are actually more important than Google. Um, getting social proof um, for your products, your delivery and, and any post-purchase service via Facebook reviews is hugely important because the customers can't come and look and feel in the store. Um, so uh, again, with e-commerce, I think with those third-party and Facebook, there's probably um, a lot more merit in focusing on, on those type of reviews. Also, just taking a moment to think about consumer behavior, um, and this is where it can get a little tricky. Google My Business is where people often go to place negative reviews because of how prominent it is um, sort of next to your business and because of the damage that it can do to credibility. If they're really mad, they will bother to go up and set up a Gmail account just so that they can publish the nasties right next to your business. On the other hand, because Facebook is a social platform, it generally attracts slightly more positive reviews. And because most people have a Facebook account, they're easy to leave. Um, so you can get in a sticky situation where a business can have a one star rating on Google My Business and five stars on Facebook. So with all of that in mind, and I hope I haven't blown you up yet, um, ultimately Google reviews are gonna have more weight when it comes to your SEO and your Google My Business listing performance. Um, in the image above, we have two similar local searches, again, for this podiatrist. Um, you can see how the slightly different search terms can actually affect the ranking um, in this map pack. Um, so for one search in second and, and the, the next search there in, um, in first position. Um, but at the end of the day, as a customer, particularly for, for, for you know, something that's sort of medical, you've got, a, you've got an ailment, um, who would you go to? 
Well, personally, I like to sort of crowdsource my reviews. <laughs> and so looking at Melbourne Podiatry Clinic, they've got, you know, 70 odd reviews and a great star rating. So out of the ones listed here, they're absolutely the ones that I'm going to trust and I'm going to give them a call first. Yeah. All right, let's make it Facebook official. So what would you say to a business owner who isn't planning on using Facebook to promote their business? Just make it Facebook official. At least create and claim your Facebook page. Facebook will actually create an unofficial page if enough people start checking in and tagging a business. And the most popular content for people to post on unofficial pages usually includes negative comments from disgruntled employees, customers, and your competitors. So you will need a personal Facebook account to create the page. Um, so just make sure your email address um, is set up and you've set up a backup email again, like we discussed before, so that you can always password reset in the future. If you don't wish to monitor it for now, that's totally fine. You can actually go into Facebook page um, manager settings and turn off comments, messages and reviews. That's a really good idea, especially if you're not going to be responding to them. Um, you can always turn them on again later. Um, I had a private school client who had not created an official page and when searching for the school on Facebook by current and prospective parents, the unofficial page showed. Um, and the first piece of content greeting the prospective parents included profanities and negative comments from past students, which is definitely not reflective of behaviours that the school encourages to its students, really bad PR. Um, so always make sure that you can manage your reputation through reviews and what content is posted via a official pages so Yikes. <laughs> yeah yeah not not good um so what I would like to do now is I know we've talked a lot about um some of these listings and I do want to just go quickly into a live demo so that um, I can I can quickly show you some of the key areas that I use for my customers to make sure that we can start getting some rankings for some keywords, um, getting our business in front of people who don't know who they're gonna who they're gonna go with yet, um, and just I guess the the back end of um, uh, Google My Business. So give me a second, I'll share my screen. Okay, great. This is an example. Um, this is actually my, my brother's business, um, Fast Track Towing and Transport. Um, so when you Google his business name here, um, you can see his organic listings are, are appearing and here is his Google My Business. So, you know, the, the photo on the front, logos are great, um, but I do like to sort of show um, the product or service. So he, here's an example of the, you know, a, a nice looking truck. It's clean, it's um, not damaged, um, and it's got a, a decent looking vehicle on the back. Um, and then you can clearly see his service area here, which is um, Victoria. It's got 11 five star reviews. It's a link through to the website, his opening hours, phone number. Um, if you don't know, if um, you have claimed your Google My Business or you don't have access to it, you can Google um, your business name or your address to see. Um, I'm logged in as, uh, as an admin, so it won't appear here for me, but um, it, here where it says edit your business information to everyone else, this will actually say, um, is this your business or, or claim your business? So you can click that link and actually see um, a bit of a snippet of which email address it's linked to. If it's not claimed, um, you'll be able to go through the process of, of claiming it straight from there. So the back end of Google My Business, so you'll log into to Gmail here and you've got the, the Google Apps here, My Businesses, and any businesses that you are an owner of will uh, come up in, in here. So obviously I've got a few, but we'll have a look at this one today. Just like a Facebook profile or, or any other sort of profile, you've got your home page. Um, really great um, quick links to create a post, add a new photo, um, update your business hours. Really important here, your COVID-19 update. I uh, When we 
But when we first sort of went into COVID and, and lockdowns and stuff, I went and put a COVID update in all of my customers' listings and I found within a week of doing that, their visibility and their presence and their click-through um, for, for free searches um, went through the roof. And they were obviously, Google was obviously prioritising businesses that had a COVID update because this is what's important to their customers. You will get some performance data around, you know, what you're appearing for. Um, a great example here of why you should log in often is that um, a customer or someone on the internet has somehow mistakenly updated their holiday photos to our page, um, which is actually getting a lot of a uh, lot of views. They're not um, they're not relevant. We didn't post them, um, so I can go in here and actually flag those as being not relevant. Um, to the business. You can obviously reply to, to your reviews, which I uh, very much encourage you to do. But the important parts here as a starting point is your info. Um, making sure that your, your main categories are relevant and what you do. Um, in the example here, so I'll just show you. So towing service and tra transportation service, when you actually start typing in, Google will present any relevant categories. Um, in this example, there's only a couple of sort of relevant categories, um, but other businesses, say, for example, a dentist might have cosmetic dentistry, implants, braces, orthodontics. Um, it might have a lot of different categories that you can add. And then you can go and add as many, as many categories as relevant that you can. Then your service areas. So what we've done is we, we do service all of Victoria, but then we have picked out suburbs that are closer to our service uh, or to the to base location that we can really, that we really want to focus on because we can get there fast and we can do emergency tows easily, which are all in the Western suburbs. You can see here opening hours, it's open 24 seven, but you can have um, different opening hours on different days. You can mark certain days as closed. Um, Special hours is a really great one. And again, this like if you are going in and putting your special hours in, that's a sign to Google that you are on top of your listing. So here, um, a couple of relevant ones we've got coming up is like public holidays, Anzac Day, Queen's birthday. Um, so you go in here and just confirm that you are open or if you're closed or if your hours of operation have changed. If you're a storefront, this is particularly um, important because uh, if on public holidays, sometimes people want to go to a store and if your Google My Business says that you're open and then they get there and you're closed, that's really, really frustrating for your customers. Making sure that you've got your short name, um, get in fast and, and get one that's actually relevant to your business. Um, that's really important why you would just at least claim a listing. Um, and then down here, you've got, if you've got products, absolutely put your products in here. Um, otherwise, you know, towing is a service base. So this is where we really go into detail and put as many sort of relevant keywords as possible because it's these keywords that is going to help your Google My Business actually rank for, for search terms that are related that people are putting in. So here you can see car towing, local haulage, long distance, motorbike, heavy, special vehicle. Um, and again, if anyone types any of those things, then it, it, it proves our ability to, to appear for those in, in the location. Um, they're probably the main ones that I, I wanted to take you through. Um, other than, you know, once you actually set up your listing, the post page, um, I spoke about before, you know, we, we see where people put on Facebook like a Mother's Day special or some kind of special or free delivery, whatever it might be. Um, but if people don't go to Facebook, they're not going to see that message. So um, in Google My Business now, they have even more kind of um, posts that you can do. So you can create offers, um, you can put updates, you can add an event, you can add products. Um, so that that's all really um I guess, relevant. And then again, if you are actually filling these out, you're sending all the signs to Google that my listing's up to date, please prioritize me. Um, and that's, yeah, that's probably um, all I need to take us through at this point. But um, certainly, you know, if, if you have any um, challenges with Google My Business, just Google, how do I claim my Google My Business page? All really great tips, Emma. Thank you for that. Um, 
And I think that is all that we're going to cover today. It's been 40 minutes of a lot of information. I understand um, that, you know, these things are, can be quite challenging. And if you, especially if you're first starting a business, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, so we're here to help. Um, and now I'm going to go to the questions, the Q&A. So if you've got any questions about what we've covered today or anything that we may not have covered today, uh, we're happy to, to kind of field those questions. Give me one second and I'm just going to check. All right. So first question up, um, I think it's a bit of advice. So Emma, how many times a week should you be posting on Facebook? Yeah, great question. Um, look, again, it comes down to what kind of business you are, but, you know, you really, I, what I tell business owners is you need to weigh up your time investment into the payoff. So have a look at how many Facebook followers do you have? If you have 100 Facebook followers that is like grandma, auntie, and a few friends, um, then investing a lot of time into, into posts on Facebook probably isn't going to, um, you know, sort of pay off. If you have thousands and thousands of, uh, of followers on Facebook, then you absolutely want to be posting regularly. But you have to make sure that when you do post, the content that you're posting is getting engagement because what Facebook will do if Facebook sees that you're posting a lot but it's not getting the engagement, the algorithm will actually stop showing your content to people. So then you you have a scenario where you're putting all this time and effort into it and and not um, it's not actually being seen by anyone. So you need to sort of weigh all of that up. One thing that I will say though is if you are a larger brand or if you're a brand that has repeat customers. Um, by chipping away, and it might only be sort of once a week, and, and there is no, you know, special recipe for this, but by having content that people can then look at your page and scroll back and back and back and see that you've got loads and loads of content that does, um, from a branding perspective, that does instill trust. It shows that you're a business that's been around for a long time that has, you know, valuable content. But, but again, you know, weighing up your time investment to make sure that actually that work actually provides a return for you in your business. Yeah, that's great advice. I think all in all, um, all publishers, Google, Facebook, et cetera, are, are looking to provide fresh, relevant, and accurate content for us as users out there. So, um, as many as you can, uh, balancing up, you know, the time investment, as Emma said, but it can be really powerful for your brand, even if no one's liking it or commenting on it. The fact that it exists um, is a really great step in the right direction. All right, we've got another question here, and it's focused around the podiatry clinic. So um, if that podiatry clinic has so many good reviews, why isn't there listing first for those searches? So I'll just go back to that slide just yeah. so that you guys can take a look here. Um, and that's a great question. Yeah. So look, um, great question um, and probably quite frustrating for the podiatry clinic sometimes. Um, but the reality is, is there's, a, there's a number of things that go into play with any organic or SEO algorithm. And there's certainly an algorithm for the map pack as well, um, which some of those elements include um, the name of the business, the quality of the reviews, the number of reviews, um, how often they update their Google My Business, um, what information is in their Google My Business, um, but also things like uh, the, you know, if this was taken, this looks like it was taken on desktop at the time, but the location of the desktop, if it's on mobile, the location of the mobile. So even though there's a lot of things that build into, I guess, the placements, um, know that sometimes just the one that's closer might, for whatever, you know, might have a slightly um, stronger pull when it comes to <clears throat> excuse me, when it comes to that ranking in that particular moment. Um, but you can see, again, like these two searches, podiatri uh, podiatrist Essendon and podiatry Essendon. Um, I mean, Essendon Foot Clinic is called Essendon Foot Clinic, um, and they're marked as a, as a podiatrist, the same as um, Melbourne Podiatry. But maybe in their listing, they've mentioned podiatrist as opposed to podiatry a couple more times. And this is where, you know, we start going down the, the route of SEO, but 
making sure that you've got um, keyword variation and that, and that your content is keyword rich. So my advice to Melbourne Podiatry Clinic in this example might be, you know, you've got a lot of podiatry content because of your business name. So maybe what we need to make sure in your listing is maybe we do a post that, that specifically talks about a podiatrist or a podiatrist in Essendon. I'm not the... Uh, you know, I don't have the magic wand and I don't know the Google algorithm, but these are just sort of some of the things that you can play with to see whether it actually does improve your, your positionings. All really great advice and insights, um, you know, and it's, it's not something that we can necessarily control. We don't have the, the Google algorithm magic wand, like you said, um, but we can certainly give advice based on what we've experienced and seen in the field. All right. Well, I think that is all the content that we have for you today. Hopefully, we're able to give you a bit of a helping hand in getting started or to maximize your listing so that you can be found in more places online. Now, with that, I'm going to pass over to Trent to wrap up the session. Thank you so much, Nicole and Emma, for sharing your knowledge and practical tips on how, how to be found online. I certainly learned a few things there. Um, we trust everyone on the webinar got some valuable information from that session, and that will help you to support, you know, get your business online. Um, this is a part of a series of webinars that we've been doing to help our customers succeed online. And if you'd like to register for any of our upcoming webinars, please visit us at nav.com.au slash business webinars. As a reminder, if you'd like to connect with any of our small business bankers, please don't hesitate to call us on 134708. It's option number three to get straight to a banker and you can speak to someone directly or set up an appointment at a time that's convenient to you. Finally, if you liked what you saw today, please do let us know. There'll be a survey when we close this down, and we actually appreciate all and any feedback. Please, please feel free to share this content with your business network so that they can also benefit from the content. But on behalf of all of us, we wish you, your business, and your family the very best and look forward to seeing you at future webinars. Thank you so much, and take care.